is Lauren Hoffman. I am 25 years old and I am a 400 hurdler for Team Philippines. Lauren, okay, I'm gonna get right to it. Can you share with us the feelings you experienced when you qualified for the Olympics? That was a very, very special moment for me. Um, you know, I didn't hit the time. I didn't hit the automatic qualifying time. So there was kind of just a lot of like waiting to see if I made that ranking and see if that ranking held. So I, I forget what date it was. I think it was like August 2nd. I was with my mom and we were actually traveling from like a beach trip, which is kind of nice. And we were at a layover and we found out um, when we got into the airport that I had made it. Like we saw a list with my name and said Lord Hoffman and it said qualified. And it was just so special. And we kind of just like burst into tears and just held each other because it was just so special. I mean, that dream is like 25 years in the making. It's her dream as well. She wanted that for me. And it was just very special to share that with her. I feel like it's so, so uh, not silly, but it's funny when I talk to other people and I'm like, what was that moment you qualified? And they're like, there really wasn't a specific moment or like I had to wait a long time or like, yeah. I just had to see my name on a list and it happened. Yeah. And I feel like yeah, it's this yeah. constant, like, it's almost like waiting for a test score or something. Literally. Yeah. Somebody um, related it to like when you're like trying out for like a sports team or something in high school or see if you get to a college and you're just like waiting, like see your name, like on a list. So it was very interesting to find out that way, um, but it was still like extremely special. What went into your decision to compete for Team Philippines? Um, so my sophomore year of college, I ended up running 57.9 in my race and the Philippines record at the time was like 57.5. And, you know, I'm, I, I relate very strongly to my Filipina, Filipina identity. Um, so... I've just like always wanted to compete for Team Philippines. And when I came close to that record, I was like, hey, like, I think I'm good enough to represent the Philippines on the world stage. And I think I'm on track to be like a post collegiate runner and be competitive. So ever since I wanted to run professionally, um, I wanted to run for the Philippines. That's so cool. What do you love most about running? What, why is track your sport? Yeah, that's a good question because like sometimes running uh, sucks and it's tiring. Um, but I think I'm a very competitive person, so I feel like, you know, it's it's always great to try to beat out other people, run against others, like strong competitors, um, and just kind of like hitting personal bests is just like a true testament to all the hard work that you put in. You know, it's different because it's not like a team sport, you know, um, nobody can like support you in that way or like you can't really rely on others that way. It's just like all on you, um, just kind of a fun element to the sport. Okay, so I always wondered and I know other people have wondered this too when it, an athlete decides to compete for team Philippines usually there's like a um, a process for becoming a citizen what was that process like for you yeah it was kind of fun because um, my mom and myself got to kind of reconnect with our roots uh, my mom had to get her dual citizenship um, and then I could get my citizenship after and I feel like she wasn't really planning on getting her dual citizenship for any reason so like me wanting to represent the Philippines kind of like brought both of us like back to the Philippines and back to our roots, like exploring our culture and our heritage. So it was kind of fun for her and I to go through that together. Um, and I feel like I've kind of inspired like my brother to kind of reconnect with his roots also. So it's kind of been very special for, for all of us to reconnect. Where can you trace your mom's roots in the Philippines? Where is she from? Yeah, she was born in Calaocan City, but she grew up like in Novotas. So we kind of consider like Novotas her hometown. Um, and that's where her cousins and our family still live, like in that area. So it's kind of nice to always go back and like see them. Um, like my my uh, my uncle Aris is like our big connection there. So I love going back and seeing my uncle Aris uh, in the both us. What have your experiences been like when you visited? I visited for the first time in April, and I tell people all the time I think about it every day. And I always like to hear what other, I guess, like immigrant kids have as their experience as well what what were yours like I think I remember the first thing I realized is like so we flew in at night um this was like two years ago uh, we flew in at night and I just remember like leaving the airport and seeing like um all the drivers like the driving is like a little bit different there's like a lot of people on scooters and a lot of like people just like turning like the driving was even just very different I feel like that was like my first like culture shock like oh wow like this is not like the the U.S. road system. Like there are people driving all kinds of different directions and honking and stuff. Um, but overall, um, it was a really great experience. Um, again, it was just very cool to see the culture, um, kind of like try to learn some Tagalog and just see so many people that just like looked like me. You know, living in Durham, there's not too big of a Filipino community. 
Um, you know, I feel like I'm finding more clubs and like more resources and finding more Filipinos, but just being in the Philippines is really cool. Um, to just be surrounded by Filipinos and great people. And, you know, I met my uncle Aris for the first time. He just like welcomed me with open arms, even though I've like never met him before. And him and his family were just so kind. So it just felt very like home. Yeah, it felt like home. That's how I felt as well. Like, and I still haven't really been able to pinpoint what it is, but I saw this Instagram reel. I'll have to send it to you where it said yeah. something about the sense of community and the sense of family allows someone mm-hmm. to authentically be themselves and to be vulnerable. And that's why the Philippines feel like home to a lot of people because you can truly oh. just be who you are while you're there. But I was the same way. And I wasn't ever able to describe it when I came back and people asked how it was. I just kept me like, it felt like home more than home has ever yeah. felt before. Yeah, that is a very good way of describing just like home, but I can't quite pinpoint it. But like literally just like leaving the airport and then being hugged by like all these like strangers, strangers. Over, like <laughs> my family. Yeah, I, they didn't even like say their name yet, but it was just this ginormous hug. And I was like, wow, like this is so welcoming. Sometimes I, I, I guess I could hear this any, uh, in many other cities in the States, but sometimes I do kind of miss the honking. <laughs> the honking and the chaotic driving and stuff. The no, like I, stop I do lights or stop signs just yeah know. yeah it's very interesting though because I feel like they're really good drivers because they just have to be aware of like all those things like I feel like in the U.S. everybody just follows like rules and I feel like that's why people get into accidents and stuff because people don't follow the rules but like they're very like aware and in, into like in the Philippines I agree with you 100 yeah. percent like there's really describe it but you get it, it we kept calling it organized chaos yes, like yeah there exactly. are less rules but they. <laughs> They have it figured out. Yeah, they're just good drivers, you know? Like, they, they're just a lot they of people. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, how has representing the Philippines and competing for Team Philippines changed how you connect with your culture, if at all? It sounded like you already, as you said, identified very strongly with your Filipino side. I would love to hear more about that. I think in track specifically, I feel like, you know, now I'm seeing a lot of Filipinos and Asian Americans excelling in track, but Growing up, I didn't really see a lot of people that looked like me excelling at that high level of track. Um, so to kind of like be that representation, whether it was on the Duke team or ACCs or NCAA, like those like different stages, um, it means a lot to me because hopefully I can be that representation to a younger girl that looks like me. I think representation is extremely important. Like when you see someone that looks like you succeeding in like something that you want to do, you're like more motivated to do it. Uh, the goal seems more realistic. So representation is very important to me um and yeah like going back to the philippines to compete it's really cool to just see a lot of people that look like me and um all the track athletes are just like so supportive and loving so it's really cool to go back and kind of like just meet like the filipino running community when i went i went because i am creating i'm in the process of creating a documentary about the soccer culture there and i what's great feel like regardless of what the community is it, it's very niche. Like I know the community that I was welcomed into is like a very welcoming and very niche. It sounds like the running community is the same. Like if you're Filipino and you sh- have a shared passion, like it's just all copacetic and everyone's like happy and welcoming in one big yeah. family. Yeah, no, definitely. That's that's how it feels when I go back for the track meets. It just it's literally like one big family. Like it's just so much love. So yeah, coming back to run in the Philippines is like so special. Those are like my favorite meets of like every year. Okay, so looking at Paris, what is one thing or maybe a couple things that you are most looking forward to about the Olympics? Other than competing, like what? Yeah, you're yeah, an yeah. Olympian, Lauren. This is a really big deal. Oh what are you excited about? It's still it's still like hitting me and coming going in waves. Like I am just so excited. Sometimes I chill out about it. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I'll be for Paris in a few days to represent the Philippines. Like what an honor. Um, I think what I'm most excited for is to just meet the other athletes, like other Filipino athletes. You know, we are, I think, 22 people deep. And, you know, it's like a it's a big group, but it's also small in a, in a good way. Like, I'm excited to kind of, like, get to know other people, like, very, very well, and, like, intimately. Like, we're sharing, like, common goal of success and representing the Philippines well. So I'm really excited to meet them. They're all other, like, they're great athletes that have also, like, dedicated their whole life to, like, um, like perfecting their craft. And they all seem very nice. So. I think that's what I'm most excited for. So excited for you. I can't wait to hear all about it. I definitely want to hear about the Athletes Village. I know us non-Olympians are always intrigued about the Athletes Village, but I can't yeah. wait to hear about your experiences. 
Yeah, I'm equally intrigued, honestly, just everything with like the cardboard beds and like the no AC. Like I'm very just curious <laughs> to see like what it's going to be like. So we'll see. Okay, so three questions to close this out, just to get mm-hmm. to know you a little bit better. If you could only eat one Filipino dish for the rest of your life, what would it be? I think I would have to say sinigang. <sighs> I believe it's my favorite. And like that flavor is like it's unlike addicting. anything else. It is addicting. Like, my mouth is watering just thinking about it. Like, it's just so savory and good. Um, I usually eat mine with shrimp in it. I don't know if that's how you usually do it. I feel like it's not super common to do shrimp, but that's how my family does it. I love sinigang. I didn't like it as a kid. I didn't like the taste. But as I got older, it's my favorite. I eat mine just with pork. But when we were in the Philippines, I had one that was shrimp, mussels, and something else. We had, like, a seafood one. and. the one that we ate in the Philippines put me to sleep. <laughs> like the real tamarind, I was knocked out. Oh, but Sunny Gong's my mouth was like literally watering, and I already ate dinner, so this is crazy. <laughs> well, outside of track, what is something that you want people to know about you? Who is Lauren Hoffman, the non-athlete? That's a good question. Um, I really just love hanging out with my friends. Um, I like playing guitar and singing, but it's not really like a performative thing. So it's more just like for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I love cats. I have two cats two and I cats. love them to death. I'm a crazy cat lady. Um, <laughs> what are yeah. your cat's names? Uh, Moog and Mochi. Cute. Well, my best friend has a cat named Mochi. I know. I feel like Mochi is kind of like a basic name, but I just it, it just fits in so well. Yeah, but it's just such a cute name. So cat lady, you play yep. the guitar, you sing. It yes. sounds like you're creative. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I'd say so. So you got the yeah. you got the Filipino genes that can sing. A lot of us don't yeah. have those. <laughs> no, I. This is a hot take, but I think every Filipino can sing. Like even the ones that say that they can't are like, oh, I don't know if I can. Like you definitely can. It's just in our blood, and you're just you just haven't found like the right song yet or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well we're gonna go to karaoke, and I promise you. Yes, we're gonna go to karaoke. We're gonna figure it out together. <laughs> Okay, so last question for you. If you didn't run mm-hmm. track and skills were a level playing field, what sport would you compete in in the Olympics other than obviously hurdles? I feel like gymnastics is an insane sport. I feel like they make the most impossible things look so easy. I think they're athletic and fast and powerful and strong. So they're just like overall like incredible athletes. So I feel like, yeah, I wish I, I, wish I was good at gymnastics. I think gymnastics would be my answer too. Yeah, it's so sick. 